Glover allows us to create collections of mappings called scenes. And each one of these scenes is a particular way of controlling music using movements and gestures. In this video, we're going to take a deeper look at scenes, see how we can switch between them and make sure that our music software and hardware stays in sync. In previous videos, we created three different scenes which had some mappings and instruments in them. I recommend you go and watch those videos, but they aren't necessary to understand what we're going to discuss here. But as a recap, we've got uh, a scene with, for playing around with a drum loop, we've got a scene for playing some chords, and we've got a scene for playing some melodies. So each of these scenes encapsulates a certain bit of behavior. One really key thing to understand, only one of these scenes is sending at a time. So if I'm in the chords scene, the playing melodies and drum loop stuff isn't active. Scenes are exclusive by default. So that's quite key for you to just take on as a kind of fundamental principle of Glover. So what we can do is really just go and switch between each of these scenes and each of them is exclusive from the other. But what would be really great is if we could actually switch between the scenes using our gestures. So if we click on the chord scene, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, add a new parameter. So I'm going to take um, my hand tilt, palm left. Okay, so this is when my palm is pointing to the left uh, on, on, on the leap motion. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add an output here. And this output, um, I'm going to choose a scene switch. So here, I can just choose the scene that we're going to switch to. So I want us to switch to the drum loop. So now when palm left is connected to the drum loop, um, it will switch to the scene when I make that gesture. So let's try that. So there we go. I, I put my palm to the left and the, uh, the scene switch to the drum loop scene. So now it'd be great if, if I could actually switch back again. So let's get palm right out here. So again, this is the, the palm facing to the right. Um, what I'm going to do now is create an output. I'm going to make it a scene switch. And then I'm going to switch back to the chord scene again. So here we go. And now let's try that again. So palm right, and we're in the chord scene. And from there, palm left we're in the drum loop scene. So now I can switch between these different ideas and I don't need to go anywhere near the computer, which is just really, really powerful. So, because uh, what we don't want to be doing is coming up to the computer and clicking these with a the mouse. So the whole idea of this is that we get away from the screen and we, it's, it's all about the performance. So what switching scenes allows us to do is to put different functionality in each of those scenes. So we might have effects processing in one scene and we might have uh, like an instrument in, an in another scene and then we might have another scene with a, a different instrument. And when we're switching between these different types of um, audio processing and effects, um, what's really cool is if we could actually initialize or set up some stuff when we get into the scene. So there's a way to do that in Glover and it's called an initializer. So to demonstrate it, um, what we're going to do is when we come into the drum loop scene here, we're going to uh, turn on this drum loop and start playing it. So to do that, what I'm going to do is um, create an output message here, and I'm going to drag in um, a MIDI message. So I'm going to just put MIDI message just to show you that we can change this. I'm going to put that MIDI message 88. Um, so then you can see this initializer button. So I'm going to turn that on. And you can see this little eye thing pops up here to show it's an initializer. So uh, what that means is that when we enter this scene, this value here is going to get sent Im like immediately without us doing anything. So let's change this value to be like the, the kind of largest sort of um, MIDI control change value. And then I'm just going to give this a, a name. It's going to be um, start loop. Okay, so when we enter this scene, this will send the value one, two, seven. So what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna go into Ableton Live and I'm going to, I've got our loop here. So I'm gonna enter MIDI mapping mode. I'm gonna select my loop. I'm gonna go back into Glover here. Now I'm gonna drag this around a bit. So I'm gonna go to the chord scene. Now when I go back to the drum loop scene, you're gonna see the, this MIDI message get picked up here. Right, you see that? So 188 got picked up there. So now let's 
go out of MIDI mapping mode in Ableton, back in Glover, so we're going to the chord scene, and now when I enter the drum loop scene, it starts the loop, which is cool. But what we really want to do here is we want to now, when we leave the scene, stop the loop. So how do we do that? So what we do is we create another message. Uh, let's put it similar to the other one, 89. Um, let's make it, instead of an initializer, which initializes it when you enter the scene, we're going to make it an exit message, which sends when it leaves the scene. So again, I'm going to set this to 127. It depends what you're doing here. Like sometimes you might be able to send the same message depending if you're turning on and off a channel or something like that. In this case, we need to actually use a, a different um, function in Ableton to stop the loop. So I'm going to rename this uh, stop loop. Okay, so we've got our start loop and stop loop. Stop loop is an exit message. So in here, um, when, this is the little stop loop button. So um, I'm going to click on that. And then back in Glover, we're going to leave the scene and you'll see a little thing there pop up. Okay, you see that? So again, I'll come out of MIDI mapping. Now, just to make this work, I'm going to um, go here. This is the quantization level. I'm going to set this to none so that basically what happens is that there's no, often when you stop a loop in Ableton, it'll wait for the end of the bar. So it won't do it here. There's, there's much more graceful ways to do this than that. And I'm not going to go into them here because this is not an Ableton tutorial, but just to explain what I'm doing. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to use my gestures. We're going to go into the scene and then we're going to start the loop and stop the loop. And then I'm, we're playing and I'm going to leave the scene and it stops. So now I've been able to initialize and, and start playing the loop and send an exit message and stop playing the loop. And that, that allows me to kind of um, to control and bind specific scenes, like the drum loop scene, to uh, specific things in my music software. Another thing that um, these initializers and exit messages are good for is controlling think something called device feedback. Now, the, the Leap Motion itself doesn't have any device feedback, but uh, Mimu gloves do. They've got um, LEDs on them, and then you've got in the Gliss phone app, you can send uh, vibration pulses or colors to that, and that can give you some information. So um, I won't do anything on it here, but I'll just show you very quickly. If you click on Map Output and choose Device Feedback, if, you, if your device has that option, you'll be able to send uh, colors and vibration feedback to your device from there. And then if you set it as an initializer, that can tell you what scene you're in. Um, so that's a that's a, another really cool thing to do because you then don't need to go and look at the computer and you know that when you switch scene that that's really happened. So one of the things I've said before is that only the current scene is sending its messages. So the only the current scene is active, the other scenes are not active. Um, so this is true, but um, there are a couple of tools we have to make exceptions to this. So for example, if we click on the, the chords scene, and then I either right click or control click on it, I can make it an always active scene. So now when I step out of the chords scene, you'll notice that it stays orange. So now both the chords and melodies scene are sending at the same time. The chords because it's always active and the melodies one because it's the current scene. So this allows us to stack up like multiple active scenes. And this means you can have some scenes which are doing some things all the time. And that, that could be really useful in uh, in some cases, really depending on your on your situation. Um, but sometimes we'll have a scene and we'll be like, well, there, is, there are always active scenes, but I want this scene to really, really ignore those. And in that case, you can right click on a scene and you can make it exclusive. So now even the always active scenes will not work. So this is a sort of higher level of exclusivity than a normal scene. So these are the sort of three uh, kind of normal scenes, um, always active scenes and exclusive scenes. And these are the three ways that we can uh, set up scenes so that they can be used in a kind of hierarchical manner. We've seen that a collection of mappings is called a scene. Well, we also have a name for a collection of scenes and it's called an arrangement. Originally, the idea of an arrangement was sort of tied to the idea of a song. So you might have a single arrangement per song. Not everybody uses arrangements like that and uh, you may or may not do, but that gives you an idea, I hope, of where it comes from. 
So if you have a look at the top up here, it says new arrangement. So uh, we can uh, double click on this and we can rename this. So I'm going to uh, rename this um, my first song, right? Okay. So now that is kind of this, this would be our first song, but then we can actually hit the plus button here and we can have a second arrangement. So this would be called like my second song. Okay. So now we're in a new arrangement and you see all the scenes that we had before are gone. There's no mappings. There's nothing. It's like a completely fresh uh, space to work in. And, and you know, that's, that's um, really great. And I can always click on here, sorry, on here. I can, I can see, go back to my first song and all those scenes are still there. All of our various things that we built. So um, this basically allows us to kind of link lots of um, functionality together. So in my second song, I can add a whole bunch of scenes and maybe they have some mappings. And um, this allows us to basically have different things for different songs. And you, again, you don't need to use them um, uh, in a per song way, but this just allows you to wrap up your your uh, different bits of functionality and different scenes into different groups. Um, there's some more powerful features associated with arrangements, such as associated files and performance mode and the arrangement manager, but they're explained in another video, which is linked in the, in the description. So what, one last thing, when we switch arrangements, we sometimes want to specify that we start with a specific scene. So let's say we've got our second song here and let's say that um, it was scene uh, two that was really, really important that we start on scene two and not on scene one or anything else. So what we can do is I can right click on here and I can say make startup scene and it gets this little sort of play button or something, I guess. So what happens is I'm, I'm going to select scene four now. So you can just see that that's not the selected scene. Uh, if I go to my first song, when we navigate back to my second song, scene two is selected. So this means that we can have like a, a first song, uh, sorry, a first scene for our song. And uh, when we switch to that song or to that arrangement, it will always be selected as the first thing.